but I like to add a small bit to it. But due to mismanagement, due to mismanagement, really? you you will see like last year Ujjain was flooded. Yeah. Yes. Right? I mean, this is basically due to mismanagement, droughts in Marathwada. You know, so mismanagement is adding to it. But India's diversity is such that say Kerala is lush green, Rajasthan is you know dry. Yes. Right. Like that. So we compensate. So in Rajasthan they wear very colourful dresses. In Kerala they wear white. You know because nature gives the colours. So as I just said, there is diversity. It will be there. And we have also added our foolishness to it. Both are there. So 
the aim is use our brains. We have brains, so why don't we use them and minimize the damage? You know, instead of looking at comforts. Earlier also he said, so you have to distinguish between need and greed. Balance. Yes. Like Gandhi ji had said, na, ki there is enough for everybody's needs, but not enough for one man's greed. One man's greed can uh, bankrupt the earth, isn't it? And then there is no backup earth. Na. <laughs> was dangerous and although Los Angeles was a prime example of it, it was happening in every city of the US and around the world. This was London at the peak of 1930s killer smog. The initial figures say 102 died, thousands became ill, hundreds and thousands choked and sputtered. Torches were needed in the midday to guide ambulances to the homes of the stricken. in just 
last four decades. Just four decades it has increased and become more than half. It would take 1.5 Earths to produce the resources that are necessary to support the humanity on the Earth. Growth in the ecological footprints is largely attributed to carbon footprint, that is, which increase, which has increased to comprise 53 percent of our footprint in 2010, and from th which was 36 percent in 1961. So you can imagine how much it has increased. From 1961 to 2010, the global population has increased from 3.1 billion to 6.9 billion and per capita ecological footprint has increased from 2.5 to 2.6 global hectares. We are cutting timber very uh, in very large quantities and so this has increased the carbon dioxide absorption has reduced, it has increased carbon dioxide in the atmosphere so much that it is leading to the main, to many global effects, such a common effect which we know is global warming. Now the average Indian has an ecological footprint of 0.9 global hectares per person. And this global footprint is 2.7 global hectares per person in per capita. And after China and USA, India has, has the third largest ecological footprint in the world. China's rank was 76th in its per capita footprint but has the world largest national population. And now in India, this has shifted from 36th largest to third largest. So you can imagine what will be the effects on our ecological system and ecological balance. fossil fuels, the Earth's temperature has rapidly increased and it's the beginning of industrial age. The rays of the sun warms the Earth and the Earth's surface radiates the heat outwards. Greenhouse gases prevents this heat from escaping out of the Earth. Without these gases, the temperature of the Earth would be unbearably colder. The sun's radiation comes in the form of light rays heating up the Earth some of the radiation that is absorbed is radiated back in the space in the form of infrared rays. But some of the infrared radiation is trapped by the atmosphere. So the problem is the atmosphere is continuing to consist more or more CO2 and greenhouse gases due to human activities. Since beginning of the industrial revolution, nitrous oxide which is used as fertilizers has 18% carbon dioxide from fossil fuels and combustion has increased to 39 percent. Water is essential to everyday life for drinking, cooking, bathing, cleaning and landscaping. In a day, Europeans use about 50 gallons of water. Americans use 100 gallons. 400 billion gallons are used in the US. Those living in sub-Saharan Africa use 2 to 5 gallons. About 36 million gallons are leaked in the New York City water supply system a day. 200 gallons can be wasted by a running toilet. A bath uses up to 70 gallons. A shower uses 10 to 25 gallons. One drop per second equals 30,000 gallons per year. More than 25% of bottled water comes from the same place as tap water, a municipal water supply. Drinking 8 glasses of water a day from water bottles will cost up to $1400 a year. Drinking from the tap will cost about 50 cents per year. 55 to 78% of a human's water body weight is made up of water. 97% of water is salt water. 3% is fresh water. 
0.3% of which is found at the Earth's surface. 68.7% of Earth's fresh water is unusable because it is in glaciers. More water is found in the atmosphere than all of the rivers of the planet combined. Water is the only compound on Earth that naturally exists in solid, liquid and gaseous form. Water can dissolve more substances than any other liquid. It takes 10 gallons of water for a single slice of bread, 713 gallons of water to produce a cotton t-shirt, 1000 gallons of water for 1 gallon of milk, 634 gallons of water for 1 burger. These were some important facts about water. Now let's see more. What does water mean to you? Water is a very important resource and there is a huge amount of water on this planet but the people do not take care of it. For example, tube wells have dried up these days. So everyone is facing the problem. But when they have enough water at that time, nobody cares of shutting the taps off or repairing the broken ones and the water gets washed. If we don't respect its existence, we will have to suffer. water supply in your home? Yes, but seldom. The taps flow with water only once in two to three days. But the water is so dirty that you will puke if you see. It's just like muddy green water like it is in the chambers. If someone drinks it, he suffers from stomach aches, ulceration, 
cholera and other serious problems. So, do you go to fetch water from elsewhere? Well, other people have bore wells, but we have to use the public hand pump. Do we need to uh, do we need a hand pump nearby? It's there, about 5 minutes away from here. We suffer so much because of water scarcity. Our children get ill if they drink that water. So, can we make an action plan so that water does not get polluted or wasted? People must be told about how to use water judiciously. They should save whatever they have. And concerning about the dirty water, it must be dumped in a huge garbage pit. This serves all the purposes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Rain comes in heavier downpours. Tropical storms are much more intense, more destructive and more frequent. One of the largest and deadly factor of global warming is increasing melting ice sheets and glaciers all over the globe. From 1978 to 2004, perennial sea ice cover in the Arctic declined by 7.8%. Global warming is continuing rise in the average temperature of Earth's climate system. Have a bias towards the actions. Let's see something happen now. You can break the big plan into small steps and take the first step right away. So now, let's get to know more. Compost your waste. As we know, reduce, reuse and recycle. Use high efficient washers. Avoid plastic. Recycle paper and save trees. Go for solar panels. Avoid using styrofoam as it can be recycled and is dangerous for animals. Carpooling The best is to plant trees. Save electricity and avoid release of CFCs. Please don't litter. Save water. Keep the city clean. for bicycles instead of cars as it is good for you and for the environment. Stop emissions.
save electricity. Use LEDs. Lastly, every drop counts.